Okay, a very good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I think we have more people than I've expected. So today, I'm going to talk about the uh, millions of slaves that we own, and thus we don't need a maid. So why do we have slaves? I think uh, I better have a disclaimer before we start. I don't support slavery in whatsoever forms, except the form that I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to talk about three matters today. First, what are slaves? What are our slaves? And the need of us to take care of our slaves as well. So when we look at slaves, how do we define them? Well, for, for one, they belong to us, we own them. So basically, they are ours. And secondly, they work very hard. They work relentlessly, 24 hours, 24-7, and there's no escape. The only way to escape is death. And that's how it is when they are serving relentlessly. So our slaves actually do that for us, 24-7, with or without our commands. Now, how do I define slaves? Now, let's look at it. Now, how many cells do we have in our body? And out of those cells, how many of those that we have extra, and those are actually microorganisms? Now, if we look at it, we actually have uh, almost 30 trillion cells, but we have around 40 trillion microorganisms from height to top, top to bottom. So we actually have more microorganisms than all the cells accumulated in our body. Now, when we look at it, where were all these microorganisms come from? Well, basically, if we look at every inch of our system, we are not alone. We are like a planet, a galaxy. And all these are living inside us. All right, if we look at the human microdiversity map, we have different types of microorganisms. They kind of look like aliens, don't they? Different locations, different sizes, different shapes, different colors. And when we look at the human body again, where would most of these slaves would actually be living? Majority of them would be living in our gut. We have all others. I will show some examples later. But why do we call them slaves? That's because we are healthy, because they maintain balance for us. And I think we've heard of all the Johnson & Johnson commercial, what's the pH of our skin? 5.5. Why is that so? Because our skin is a little bit acidic, and we need to maintain that, so that all the other bad bacteria do not overpopulate, so the good bacteria can actually live. And when we look at uh, skin, for example, now, this is one example. Each of us will have different skin, and each of us will have different slaves. And if we look at just the color, all those colors represent different types of slaves. And we can see that the colors are already different. Different parts of our body will have different population of microorganisms. Now, if we look at skin closely, skin is a very huge organ that we own. And it goes up to 2 meters square. That's like 20 square feet. If we look at some slaves that we are actually slaving. Now, these are some of the examples. Some of them are opportunistic, which means that they cannot attack us if there is no opening on the skin. Or if our other slaves in our skin are actually making them uh, inhibited, thus they cannot overpopulate. And then we have acne problems, body order problems, many of it are actually attributed to all these different bad bacteria that are overpopulating in our skin. Now, this is one example. Uh, one clinical trial that was conducted that I particularly like. So this is just one human being. I'm sure if we were to go through this 3D scan, all of us will have different colors, different parts of our bodies, and our profile will be very different. So this particular human being, the redder it is, basically indicate a higher population of microorganism. So this person here, as we can see, on the neck, on the feet, would have more bacteria. Then we could talk about vagina. Now, many people do not realize that many women actually suffer from what we call bacterial vaginosis. It's actually vagina bacterial overinflammation. That occurs, I would say, in majority of women, and all women would experience at least one of it. And BV, as we call it in short, is big business. Big business for the gynecologist, big business for dietitian, nutritionists, and also traditional remedies. So if we look at all the colors for normal mi microbiological uh, profile, how would it look like? You see a lot of the light green bar, that's normal. 
But then when there is a bacterial infection in the vagina, then you can see that the light green bar decreases. Because the good bacteria, the good slaves that are slaving to keep the population and the environment uh, safe, is actually reducing. And then when they recover, those good bacteria come back. Now this is how these good bacteria look like in a healthy vagina. So you see those rod-shaped ones, those are the healthy ones. And those are the ones that are producing acid to kill off all the other bad bacteria. And if they are gone, like this one, this is from a patient with bacterial vaginosis. You can see the rod-shaped bacteria are gone. So the slaves are no longer there, or less. Thus, the bad bacteria are overpopulating. And this is another example to show what is the population of vagina in women if they have HIV. So those HIV negative ones, you see more yellow in color, which is good because that is the color of the good bacteria. Then as you move on to your right, you see that the color changes upon infection. And if those women, they are HIV positive, you would see that the yellow color shrink again. So HIV is actually an immune disorder. So immunity also plays a role in killing our good slaves. And then when we talk about hair, so are you losing it? Well, I always hear the joke saying that it's okay to have gray hair or white hair because you still have hair rather than to have it bald. Well, we have all these celebrities losing hair and then now scientists even find that to maintain a, hair, a safe and healthy scalp, you actually need to have a very healthy scalp environment. And what preserves that healthy scalp environment is actually hair slaves. So hair bacteria, the good ones, that are actually maintaining the environment of our scalp. So now, with that knowledge of human microbiota, forensic scientists and detectives are actually trying to evaluate hair to see are they male or female? And which part of the body are they form, from? So when we think of hair, we only think of scalp, but there are many other parts of our body that would actually have hair as well. So one example is scalp hair and also pubic hair. And as you, and as you can see, men and women who have very different profile of slaves in the uh, hair in scalp and also in pubic area. And even within women themselves, all the hair profile of microbiota in the hair, regardless where they are from, are different. And then there is also a need to take care of the slaves of our lives. Now, if we look throughout uh, our life, the moment we are born till the moment that we die, throughout this aging process, we actually see a shift in uh, microbiota. We actually see a shift in our slaves. Our slaves finally leave us before we leave them. This is one uh, study that we did. We gathered two to six-year-old children so we had over 500 of them, but we only managed to get some samples from over 200 of them. And if we look at the colors changes, we don't have to know what microbiota we're looking at, but just the color that's changing. You look at those from two to three years old and those from four to six years old, the color is already changing. So our children, when they are young, once they hit preschool days, they already have a microbiota or composition of slaves that is almost similar to adult. The top graph actually shows what kind of slaves that we have in uh, infant gut babies. The bottom one, what kind of slaves that we have in human breast milk samples. So as you can see, the red dot, we just target on one type of bacteria, which is what we call bifidobacterium. That's the good bacteria in a lot of infant milk that they're adding in right now. Abundant in women breast milk, and then we are feeding all these babies. So as we see, as time goes by, babies accumulate more of those good slaves that keep their gut healthy, and they come from breast milk. And then the saying goes, you are what you eat, which is very true. If we look at the world map, different diet actually contribute to different composition of microbiota. So basically, gut slaves changes every time we eat something else. You eat something that they don't like, they die. You eat something that favor the bad ones, then they overpopulate and they overtake the good ones. And then this is just one good example of a very small change in our gut or lifestyle that will make all these slavery profiles change again. So we don't have to have some very drastic diseases. This is just a very common problem that many of us would have, constipation. 
So once we are constipated, and you can see that the blue color pie chart already take over the, the rest of it. So once we change a little bit of our lifestyle or discomfort, our slavery in our gut, the, the good bacteria actually decrease. And also, those of us who are traveling a lot, we can actually see when we travel, the profile of this microbiota also change. And then when we stop traveling, we go back home, back to our comfort zone, ah, the microbiota resume back to their normal population. And that, uh, the next graph shows infection. That is very common. Every time that we are sick, like me now, with this deep cough, something's very bad in my gut right now. And this interesting study also shows that some of our gut microbiota, our slaves, actually keep us healthy because they keep us digest our nutrients and all, all the uh, dietary components that we're eating. So what they did is that they get uh, fecal samples, they take out all the slaves from twins. So one twin is actually obese, the other twin is actually lean. And then they took this microbiota and then they put it inside animals, in rats, in mice. So what have they found is that when the mice were eating even low-fat diet, high-fiber diet, but if they get this pool of microorganism from the fat or obese twin, the mice turn, turn obese as well. But if they were to get the microbiota from the lean twin, they remain lean. And then this is one example of what happens when we're eating antibiotics. So when we are sick, most doctors right now would try to prevent the, the prescription of antibiotics because antibiotics can just wipe off whatever microbiota that we have inside without uh, sel any selection. They would just wipe it off. So as we can see, the colors of the pie charts tend to change when we eat different types of antibiotics. And we did one of these uh, community projects. We tried to enlighten uh, our community to know that the chickens that we are eating actually have, are eating feed that contain antibiotics. And what happens to the chicken? We are eating the chicken, right? So hopefully we want to eat healthy chicken so we remain healthy. Now what we did was that we got a sponsor from a farmer in Balik Pulau, and then we got a sponsor from Korea to sponsor us some probiotics. Probiotics are these good bacteria that you can find in Yakult or Vitagen or yogurt. So when, when we feed those uh, chickens with normal diet containing antibiotics, look at what happened in the intestines. Top photo. Looks like my hair early in this, this morning at 6 a.m. Then the bottom one are the ones that we don't feed them antibiotic, but we feed them probiotic. That looks like my hair right now. So basically, these chickens are unhealthy. Intestines are damaged. And that is just the sole effect of just one component, antibiotics. And we are eating those chickens. And if you can see from here, our intestines should have a zigzag feature so that we can absorb more nutrients. Those with antibiotic, it's all over the place. It's no longer zigzags, rather straight. And if you look closely, there are actually pores or holes on the intestines. That's the effect of antibiotic. Now we see how it affects antibiotic, how antibiotic affects our intestines, and how it actually affects all these good slaves that we have in our intestines. And the one that we were feeding probiotic with uh, remain healthy, less pores, much zigzag. And uh, that was when the uh, press conference uh, was held and the press was released, press materials was released. I think that's all. Thank you so much for your kind attention.